study of epidemiology helps us to understand what is the interplay and association between the three important components in the genesis of a disease that is agent, host and environment. With the same viral infection, someone develops florid ARDS and dies, whereas many others remain asymptomatic. What are the factors in host immunity that are important in determining se severity of this disease and formulating management strategies? Besides, it would be prudent to know about the factors that are important in the transmission of this virus. Dr. Dinesh Walia is a resident in the Department of Medicine who will be presenting this talk and Dr. Neeraj Nishal is the preceptor. Over to Dr. Dinesh. So the key learning objectives from this webinar would be to identify the possible source of origin, what are the different reservoirs for this infection, to know the incubation period of the disease, to identify the various modes of transmission and how are they clinically important to us, to define what is reproduction number and what is its clinical implications, to understand how uh, is an immune uh, response mounted against this infection and how it can be explored clinically for the betterment of the population. So starting with something on the origin of the virus. So SARS coronavirus 2 is a novel virus which is thought to be originated from the bat because bats are the reservoir of most of the coronaviruses and phylogenetically it was seen that 98% homology was there between the bats coronavirus and the novel coronavirus which was identified. Normally, for any coronavirus or any other zoonotic disease to spread to humans, there has to be an intermediate source. Either there can be an intermediate source or it can directly spread from a bat to human. So, an intermediate host in this uh, disease is speculated to be a pangolin, but it has uh, not yet been confirmed. So, either it can be directly transmitted from the bat to humans or it can be transmitted to humans through an intermediate source. But once this virus has entered the human transmission chain, then the further spread occurs by human to human transmission which in this case, because the uh, predominant site of origin is uh, uh, affection is lungs, is the respiratory droplet nuclei. So coming to the origin of this virus, it started all started in China, Wuhan uh, city of China in the Hubei pro province, when a cluster of patients with severe lower respiratory tract infections, the specimens isolated a novel coronavirus in the late half of December 2019. Next generation sequencing and phylogenetic analysis showed that it was similar to the bat coronavirus in 98% aspects. So further speculating and reinforcing the bat as a possible source of origin. It also showed that it had 79% homology with the SARS coronavirus and 51% homology with the MERS coronavirus which are coronaviruses which have previously caused epidemics and pandemics. So since it had uh, more homology with SARS coronavirus, WHO named it SARS coronavirus 2 and the disease caused due to this virus was came to be uh, was known as the coronaviral disease 2019 abbreviated as COVID-19. It is classified as one of the beta coronaviruses since coronaviruses have four uh, different classes alpha, beta, gamma, delta. So this is how it originated. So as we have seen that uh, there are four different proteins in the coronaviruses S, N, M and E. This SARS coronavirus 2 shows homology with the SARS coronavirus at 76% aspects on S protein, 90% aspects on N protein, 90% on M protein and 94% E protein. So this further shows that it is more closely related to the SARS coronavirus and rather than the MERS coronavirus. Now we will try to understand the various routes of transmission. So initial epidemiological studies showed that the initial cases were traced back to a wet market in Wuhan. But as the uh, number of diseases increased, it was identified that the main mode of spread is from person to person. So there has been uh, multiple uh, evidences which have shown that the predominant mode of transmission is through droplets. For any respiratory tract infection, droplet uh, it can spread through either droplet, respiratory droplets or droplet nuclei which are different in their sizes. If a particle size is less than 5 micrometer, it is a respiratory droplet nuclei. So as we can see in this picture, any person who is infected with the SARS coronavirus 2 will have the virus in his respiratory droplets. Now this can spread to any healthy individual through two ways. Either these uh, droplets can directly enter the respiratory tract or any other mucosal surface of the non-infected person or it can be indirectly spread through various fomite and different inanimate objects because the respiratory droplets can spread to a 1 to 2 meter from the individual when the person coughs or sneezes. So when the uh, non-infected person comes in contact with these inanimate process pro, uh, pro objects, they can be infected. So the transmission can be through direct contact as we have seen or indirect contact through fomites. 
So there have been few studies which have shown that live virus has been cultured from the stool of the patients who are affected. But as of now, there is no evidence to suggest that fecal-oral transmission is a predominant mode of transmission. Looking at some other routes of transmission, as for any other respiratory disease, there is always a concern about airborne transmission. So airborne transmission is transmission through red droplet nuclei, which is less than 5 micrometer, which are by virtue of their low, uh, less size, they remain in suspended, they remain suspended in the uh, air for a prolonged period of time and can be transmitted through a greater distance because they are lighter and can remain suspended for a long period of time. They are predominantly generated in procedures which generate aerosols. Some of these procedures are endotracheal intubation, bronchoscopy, open suction of the endotracheal tubes, administration of nebulization drugs, manual um, uh, bag and mass ventilation before intubation, non-invasive positive pressure ventilation and cardiopulmonary resuscitation during chest compression. However, a study of more than 75,000 patients of coronavirus disease in China reported that airborne transmission is not the major mode of transmission. So some other modes of transmission which have to be very um, uh, shown to be important is the vertical transmission. So there was a study of nine pregnant females who in their third trimester were followed and there was no evidence of vertical transmission to their children and there was uh, the virus was not isolated in the amniotic fluid. However, to further confirm whether the virus is transmitted through the vertical mode or not, further studies are required, especially in the first and second trimester. Another important aspect of transmission is breastfeeding. So there have been a very limited number of studies which have shown that SARS coronavirus 2 is not in not present in the breast milk. The CDC guidelines say that if the mother is infected and want to breastfeed the child, she should wear a face mask and wash her hands before each feed. However, if the mother opts for an express breast milk option, she should use a separate uh, breast milk pump and should follow the uh, hand hygiene and other standard practices before each feed. So coming on to the incubation period. As for any infectious disease, incubation period is defined as the time from infection to the time of first symptom onset. So for coronavirus disease, it varies from 2 to 14 days in various studies. The median incubation period, which is identified or defined as the time in which about 50% of the symptomatic patients show the first symptoms has been reported to be 5 to 6 days. And the major clinical implication of incubation period is the period of isolation. If a person has been exposed to a positive patient, the duration of which if the person is usually asymptomatic within the incubation period, it is less likely that the patient will develop the disease and it is very important in surveillance. Like any, any group of people who had con come in contact with the positive patients, so they have to be followed up for the maximum incubation period to rule out the possibility of symptomatic disease in them. So this is a graph which is showing that almost 100% of the patients showed the first symptoms within 10 to 15 days. So that is the range of incubation period from 2 to 15 days and about 50% of the patients who were symptomatic showed their first symptoms at 5 to 6 days that is a median incubation period. Next important epidemiological parameter is the reproduction number. We define reproduction number as the expected number of cases which are directly generated because of a one index case in population assuming that the whole population is symptomatic, is susceptible. Most of the studies have shown that the reproduction number for COVID-19 or sars cov two is in the range of 2 to 3. However, many studies have differently shown that initially, when the virus was initially spreading, it had a reproduction number of 4 to 6. But there are many different factors like the population density, the number of household contacts that will and the mobility of the patient that will affect the reproduction number. As of mid-April, the reproduction number in India was 1.7. So the clinical implication of reproduction number, as we can study from this graph, the smaller picture within the graph shows a person manifestation, the transmission of a disease with reproduction number of 2. So there is a log increase in number of cases with a factor of 2. Each person affecting 2 people will lead to a large number of cases within a span of time. Coming to the bigger graph, when we can see that any at any given, uh, so x axis, y axis is showing the cumulative number of cases and x axis is showing the number of days which are required to achieve those number of cases. For We can assume for any given number of cases, the infection with a uh, reproductive number which is more, it takes less time for it to achieve the same number of cases as compared to the infection which has a lesser reproduction number. So this has a clinical importance in the rapidity of spread of infection and it's very important to control or uh, contain the spread of infection. Coming to the next parameter, the period of infectivity. So period of infectivity for any infectious disease is very important because it is the time during which the infection can be transmitted to the susceptible contacts of the patients. 
for coronavirus disease 2019 it can be transmitted even before the symptom onset that is the point even uh, when the person is himself not aware that he is infected in case of an asymptomatic patient or a very mildly symptomatic patient and it can be uh, transmitted throughout the course of illness. So viral shedding in the nasopharyngeal swabs which is the uh, predominant mode of identification of this virus depends upon the severity of disease. So various studies have been done and many studies are ongoing which are showing that the viral shedding is variable. So in one study of such 20, one such study of 21 patients, 90% of the patients had negative nasopharyngeal swab after 10 days of symptoms. However, these were the patients who had mild disease. In another disease, in another study of 137 patients, the duration of viral shedding in the nasopharyngeal, nasopharyngeal swab was as long as 20 days with a range of 8 to 37 days. So this uh, aspect is still ongoing and needs to be further explored because this is very important implications for isolation as well as for disease containment. Coming to the immunity. Now, as we know, any infectious disease, when the um, uh, person is infected, there has to be an immune response against, the, against that virus that protects the individual from that disease. So, uh, as for coronavirus disease is concerned, there are antibodies which have been detected in the patients who have been infected with the disease. A recent estimate by WHO has shown that only about 2-3% to of the infected individuals develop an appropriate immune response and detectable antibodies. Now, how much these protect, uh, antibodies are protective and what is the duration of their protection has still to be explored. So, there was a case series which was uh, done and showed that serum from uh, patients who had recovered from coronavirus disease 19 it had it had cured patients of severe disease so there is a possible role of passive immunity so patients convulsant serum which had antibodies against the coronavirus disease was able to decrease or decrease the severity of infection in patients who had a severe coronavirus disease so this is passive immunity which is to be explored both diagnostically as well as therapeutically so the clinical implications of immunity is vaccine development for any vaccine development we expose the patient to an antigen so the patient's immunity will develop an immune response against that particular antigen and when the infection comes in that uh, immunity will protect the patient from subsequent disease so various trials of various vaccines are ongoing the second implication is serological test so it is very important epidemiologically to identify the patients who have had disease or who did not have manifested the disease it has also important implications in the reinfection risk. A person who has been infected once, what is the practicality or what is the uh, risk of developing a re reinfection depends upon what is the immune response that the first infection had generated. And subsequent infections, what is the severity of subsequent infections that also depends upon the protective nature of the previous antibodies that was induced by the previous infections. And an important uh, aspect is the herd immunity. Herd immunity is an important concept in epidemiology when a majority of patients, which is usually 50 to 60 percent of the population, when they are infected and they have uh, developed immune response against it, they, de uh, they protect the population which is not infected and is not immune to the disease from developing the disease. So once the herd immunity develops, so majority of the patients, majority of the people will be infected and this infection can prevent uh, infection in those who are not exposed to or those who have not do not have adequate immunity against the disease. So coming to the current scenario of this disease. So as we can see, the total number of confirmed cases in uh, the world as of 26 April is more than 2.9 million. So we can see the trend. So initially the disease started from China, so the disease number of cases was increasing exponentially and most of the uh, cases were doubling every 2-3 to three days. Uh, some countries have gone towards the plateau phase of the disease, importantly China, France, Italy. In, uh, in US they are moving towards from the log phase to the plateau phase. India is st still somewhere between the uh, log phase and the plateau phase and various measures are being taken to taper down the curve to enter into the plateau phase currently as of now india has a doubling rate of about 8 to 9 so that that has decreased that has increased from the previous uh, estimates and we are hoping that the number of cases soon decline coming to the uh, scenario of the mortality or the number of deaths attributed to coronavirus disease so initially the number of deaths were increasing uh, at a log scale but now we can see that the current uh, estimates of death also have plateaued in certain countries like china iran italy and france uh, are also moving towards a trend of uh, plateauing and stabilization and decreasing in the number of uh, deaths. India is somewhere still between the log phase and the plateau phase. So uh, we need to still see what are the number of uh, cases, how they increase and what is the mortality from that cases. So uh, with this, the take home message would be coronavirus disease or COVID-19 caused by the SARS coronavirus 2 is supposed to be a zoonotic disease with possible source of infection as a bat. 
So it has 79% homology to the SARS virus. So it has been known, named as SARS coronavirus 2 and the disease is known as COVID-19 or coronavirus disease 19. The major uh, mode of transmission is droplet transmission with uh, the particle size uh, ranging from 5 to 10 micrometers. The incubation period ranges from 2 to 14 days and the median incubation period is 5 to 6 days. The reproduction number is somewhere varies between 2 to 3 with a median of 2.4. And uh, the role of immunity has to be explored both diagnostically for serological death and for therapeutically for the development of vaccine as well as treatment of severe cases. So with a disclaimer that uh, coronavirus disease is an ongoing pandemic and new scientific evidence is becoming available day by day. And uh, I would like to thank you all for the patient listening. And I hope that you gained something about the epidemiology of coronavirus disease and its practical implications through this webinar. Thanks a lot everyone for your patient listening. Mm -hmm.